Welcome to Fast Keto. I'm your host, Keto Jenna Girl. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Fast Keto featuring filmmaker Brian Sanders. He is based in LA and he is working on a feature length documentary called Food Lies. And he is also the host of the Peak Human podcast. He graduated from UCLA with a degree in mechanical engineering, went into the tech space and sold an app company. And he's used his tech background and love for fitness and nutrition to also work as a health coach and co-found a new health company called Sapien. And today, Brian and I talk all about his process of making the film Food Lies, some of the surprising things he learned in interviewing some of the guests that he had on. We talk about the process of funding a film and filming. And just in general, we mostly ended up talking about keto and low carb because obviously that's kind of what we both have found that we agree on is the optimal diet for humans and maybe Sapiens also, which is the name of his new company. So I hope you guys enjoyed today. Today's episode with Brian Sanders, the filmmaker behind the new documentary, Food Lies. I wanted to let you guys know I have been working on a new version of my original free ebook that I posted and released in 2015, and I've just been working on some revisions to it. If you are subscribed to the Ketogenic Girl newsletter, if you have signed up for the free ebook at any time, you are probably on the list and will receive it when I put it out. But if you want to make sure, or if you haven't signed up for it yet, you can go to ketogenicgirl.com and click on free ebook, put your name and email in there, and as soon as as the new version is released later this week, you will receive a fresh copy in your inbox. So be sure to check that out and sign up. I don't send out a lot of newsletters, but I do like to send out some recipes sometime or I'll send out notices of any special sales. But for the most part, I don't send out a ton of emails. I don't really like to get a lot of emails myself. So that's probably why I don't send them out a lot. But if I have something important to say or something really cool that I think that you'll like, I do like to send that out. And that is for sure the free ebook which has some great information in there that I've assembled for anyone either just starting out on keto or who may like to use it as a reference guide or something to send along to other people as well who are just starting keto. So check it out at ketogenicgirl.com under free ebook. If you are interested in trying out a ketogenic diet for yourself or you have been doing keto for a while and just not getting the results that you're looking for, I recommend you check out my 28 day ketogenic girl challenge. What it is is a full 28 day meal plan and program that includes all the recipes and foods that you need to eat for 28 days. I call it the 28 day challenge because it's just a great way to get past all the information overwhelm. There's so much information online about keto And this way you can just get past that. All the macros are calculated for you to get into a state of ketosis. And I was able to do that by using tried and true proven macro approaches that I've developed over several years of doing the keto diet and working with over 3000 people to date on this program. Our ketogenic girl community in the members group is incredible. Everyone in there is so supportive, providing helpful tips and hints and sharing their successes and struggles and challenges as well in the group together because we're all in this together gaining more help. The 20 day challenge program comes with weekly shopping lists, meal plan overviews, a guide to testing yourself and interpreting the results for keto. And it also comes with my support and coaching in our members only group. So go check it out at ketogenicgirl.com. It's the 20 day challenge and any purchase of the 20 day meal plans gets you access into the challenge. You can choose to get the program either soft copy or with a printed copy as well. It's printed on beautiful paper, spiral bound, and I ship it out to you the same day. So go check it out. The 20 day ketogenic girl challenge at ketogenicgirl.com. A few disclaimers. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice as I am not a qualified healthcare provider. The information presented on this podcast is for educational purposes only. Ketogenic Girl is not qualified to provide medical advice. Consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to this podcast. Prior to beginning a ketogenic diet, you should undergo a full health screening with your physician to confirm that a keto diet is suitable for you and to rule out any conditions or contraindications that may pose risk 
risks or that are incompatible with the ketogenic diet. A keto diet may or may not be appropriate for you if you have any kind of health condition, whether known to you or unknown. So you must consult your physician to find this out. Anyone under the age of 18 should consult with their physician and their parents or legal guardian. Thanks so much for joining us today, Brian. Yeah, thanks for having me. I was just saying in the intro, I believe Sean Baker may or may not have auctioned off a steak dinner with himself as a part of your funding campaign. Is that correct? Yeah, that was awesome. He has been such a great supporter of this. And he was my first interview, actually. And I was talking with him about prize. And he's like, yeah, why not? So we actually had that dinner a couple of weeks ago at Fogo de Chao. And I joined them. Actually, I came... And the guy who backed it brought his wife, and we had tons and tons of meat. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like such a fun night, and what a cool way to make your backer feel special by showing up there yourself, too, like a little surprise yeah. with it. That's so cool. So I first heard about the movie. I saw Dr. Baker post his interview from it, or his preview clip where he talks a little bit about it and it looked really cool. And I also heard your interview on, I think, Living La Vida Low Carb with Jimmy. And I really enjoyed the discussion that you and Jimmy had. And I love your mission and what you're trying to do. So for anyone who's listening who may not be familiar with you, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about what brought you here today. Yeah, well, as you said in the intro, I started as an engineer and I also started as a filmmaker growing up. So there's a lot of pieces that led me here. And I had pretty good health my whole life. So I, was, I wasn't one of these stories where, you know, my health was failing and I was getting older. It was more like my health is good. And then I started researching this stuff because my parents' health started to decline. And they actually had some major problems with chronic disease that I think was caused by their diet because we didn't really know what to eat. And, you know, we weren't eating fast food or anything, but we just were eating the standard American diet. And they ended up with tons of health issues that I think could have been avoided. So this all kind of hit about four years ago and my dad actually passed away from cancer and my mom had stage four Alzheimer's. And so I started to look at what I was doing in my health and realize it could be better. And I started doing, you know, a really low carb diet and got an even better health. I thought it wasn't even possible. It was amazing, the changes and, you know, certain things went away that I didn't even think I had a problem with. And then I realized that all of these interests could come together and a film needed to be made to just get the word out there about this. I'm sorry to hear about your parents passing. I can really relate to having family members struggle with, you know, modern disease and conditions that, you know, could potentially be addressed in some way with proper nutrition and whole foods nutrition. So, you know, definitely sorry to hear about that. And it sounds like it really ignited your passion even more. So you were already kind of on a health journey. But what stage are you at right now in terms of putting the, the movie together? Yeah, we we filmed most of the interviews. I filmed about five or six interviews and then we put the trailer together and went on Indiegogo, which has a few days left in our campaign. But I just got back from Low Carb USA where I got a bunch of awesome interviews. I got Jeff Volek, who I really respect. And, you know, he's one of the main researchers in this field for the past 20 years and is doing a lot of great things. So that was really cool to interview him. And now our, our last film tour is in August, in a couple of weeks. So we're going to go to another conference where a bunch of these people are and get some interviews with them. So after that, it's just about some of these storylines and then the post-production. What are some of the biggest food lies that you're wanting to expose in the movie? Well, there's so many. I mean, the main lies, I would say, are just like vegan propaganda type of thing. When a lot of this stuff was maybe you could call food misconceptions or things we got wrong, because a lot of this stuff wasn't blatant lies that happened over the years. You know, we got some bad interpretation of data and some bad hypotheses about, you know, 60 years ago or even 100 years ago. We started thinking that meat was bad for us. We started thinking that cholesterol clogs your arteries. You know, some of these things seemed pretty intuitive at the time. And then we got better science. And now 
the science has not caught up with us. So in a way, these lies are being perpetuated. It's not exactly the lies, but you know, it's a lie in that this bad information has been perpetuated. Right. So it's basically taking facts that were maybe some bad facts that we built a lot of our current mode and ways of eating around that you kind of want to dispel some of the myths or, you know, kind of correct some of those bad facts. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sure listeners to this podcast know most of that stuff, right? It's, you know, saturated fat is not bad for us. Diet, eating cholesterol doesn't cause high cholesterol. Eating meat is not bad for you. It's more what you're eating with that meat. Even a lot of lies, actual lies are about the environment stuff where, you know, people think, that cows are ruining the environment. And, you know, I don't agree with confined feed operations. And I think we could do a lot better. But we, I mean, we have problems on both sides with monocropping of plants. And so there's just a lot of misinformation there in the, in the environmental space. And that's going to be addressed at the end of the movie as well. That's really interesting. I think I saw maybe you had, is it Dr. Peter balance that in it he does a lot of research on ruminant yeah he's he's great i was just hanging out with him i'm gonna podcast with him tomorrow he's the one guy i've been looking for with all this information where there's a counter view to the mainstream narrative that is very true and he's been putting all this research together and i was trying to do it on my own for a month i remember in around february to prepare for the film and i started looking at it and there was so much information if he started digging in it was opposite to what even I believed in this whole time. You know, I was like, I thought, oh, yeah, methane, it's, it's so bad or it's such a huge problem. And, you know, there's whole films based on it. Forks over knives. Or one of those, not forks over knives. What is the first Cowspiracy movie? Um, is it the one that, that's based on the book? Oh, it was Cowspiracy, uh, actually. <laughs> I was oh, thinking, really? what's the first? What the health? What the health is <laughs> the, the, the health? one... <laughs> The, the really yeah. bad one. But Cowspiracy was their first movie and that whole thing was based on a total bogus lie that cow animal agriculture produces more CO2 than the transportation industry. And it's oh, wow. it's insane. That is the most backwards, stupid idea I've ever heard. Like, you know what I mean? That's there's millions of cars, <laughs> billions of people out there. Compared to cows, it's it kind of comes from the law a paper called The Livestock's Long Shadow. And the authors of that paper publicly retracted their statement. And they said they were using misinterpreted data. And I think, I don't think they said purposely, but purposely misconstrued the information to, you know, leave out everything possible for transportation and add in everything possible for agriculture. So really, it's around, it's a couple percent. Uh, Animal agriculture is actually only a couple percent. And, you know, transportation is like 20%. And also, the animal agriculture provides a real value and nutrition for us. So, I mean, it, there's always a cost of something. Right. Now, what was maybe one of the most remarkable things that you learned in all your interviews that maybe kind of blew your mind and something that you didn't know before you started doing all these interviews with all these experts? Well, I think the biggest thing, well, maybe there's three. So, one is the environmental stuff was not what I thought. Two is that you could be very healthy and be a great athlete and get type 2 diabetes. I guess that's kind of the Tim Noak story where there's more people like him that were healthy their whole life and in great shape and they got type 2 diabetes or just eating this high carb diet. So, I didn't exactly know that when I first started this journey. And then the last thing was I kind of opened my eyes to the other side of the coin. If you look at high carb diets and I was always wondering why do they work sometimes or there's the potato hack or like Penn Jillette lost a ton of weight, like eating only potatoes, or, you know, why does do vegans do well sometimes? I think they do well temporarily. So, what I was surprised to hear when I started talking to Denise Minger, who wrote a cool book called Death by Food Pyramid, and she started looking into the other side of eating sort of a high carb, very low fat, but with animal products, like which are the most important part of any diet. And she found that, and then other people are finding, not just her, she just kind of opened my eyes to the other side. So, I kind of realized that I think, you know, a ketogenic diet is amazing. I think low carb in general, these are the optimum ways to eat, but there is a way that does seem to work. And that's more of say modern hunter gatherers 
maybe the Simane in Bolivia, or there's all these populations or Hadza, Africa, Katavans, they do well with high carb, but it's a total different situation, right? They're not eating any refined grains, sugar, vegetable oils. They're not living our modern lifestyle. They're eating tons of animal products, but they just happen to be lean animal products and they go very low fat. And just that's what they have in their environment around them. They just happen to only have, you know, healthy carbs like tubers and some fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. And so their body can kind of tolerate this high carb somehow. That That's what I don't think any researchers really understand exactly is we know that carbohydrates and stuff like that cause insulin spikes and, you know, there's all these bad things associated with that. So, how do these people do it? I mean, there's many factors, some of them which I listed, but some of it just has to do with if you avoid fat so much and eat such a clean diet that it can actually work. But the key is animal products, right? It's not vegan. No one, no one lives a vegan lifestyle. It's in the wild or in history. There's a way to have a minimal amount of this animal protein and, you know, highly nutrient dense stuff like organ meats and, you know, seafood and stuff like that, but still uh, have a high carb diet. So, I, I thought that was interesting. It sounds to me like it's kind of a whole foods, almost paleo like diet. Yeah. I mean, what she does is, is like a whole foods paleo diet, but heavy on healthy starches and fruits and vegetables and sort of a minimum amount of protein and fat that's still healthy. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it works. It works for some people. I, I don't think it's recommended to the general public. You know, it's, it's really hard to do right. because most people who eat that kind of diet are eating a fully whole foods, plant-based vegan diet, right? So, they're avoiding the part that's most nutritious. I mean, that's the, the key that's holding it all together is those nutrient-dense animal foods and for some reason, they're avoiding them. I guess it's a moral reason. Or some of them are confused about the nutritional things. So, yeah, this is all going to be in the film. I'm really trying to, you know, bring to light that there's different ways to do things and everyone's different. I'm not going to just make a blanket statement that everyone needs to be on a very high-fat, low-carb diet or a ketogenic diet. You know what I mean? Magic Pill was a great film, but it's just all keto all the time and making a bit of bigger claims some people thought than they should. <laughs> so, yeah, long answer, but the, I'm also trying to just take a balanced approach in this film and sort of show everything out there and what works and the framework of nutrition and the principles instead of just picking a side. Hey guys, just taking a really quick break to talk about the 28-Day Ketogenic Girl Challenge. If you're interested in doing a ketogenic diet for yourself, it's a great place to start. I teach you everything about how to follow a keto diet to get yourself into nutritional ketosis, and it includes 28 days of meal plans. It comes with weekly shopping lists, how to interpret results, how to test yourself, a complete guide to getting started on keto. If you've been keto for a while and you're just not getting the results that you want to in terms of your health or fat loss, or you are brand new to keto, the 20 day challenge is a great option because it also comes with my free coaching and support in our members Facebook group. And you can post any questions that you have about the meal plans about keto. And I am there supporting you. We have an amazing community in our group. I like to call it the happiest place on earth because everybody in there is so excited about following keto, about having found something that really works well for them. And and everyone in there is just so kind, caring, generous, and supportive. And it's a really fun place to be and hang out. So if you like more info on it, you can find it at ketogenicgirl.com. And it's the 28-Day Ketogenic Girl Challenge. And now back to our interview. Right. But I think the main point that you made, I reposted an infographic that you had, which showed, you know, some of the latest science. This is cutting edge science that's coming out now, either in the form of new studies or in the form of studies that were suppressed. And it's all science backed facts. And all of them are kind of what I know I base my ketogenic diet around and what kind of the, they're all keto principles if you look at them there's six of them on your website you know eating fat is not bad for you eating meat is not necessarily bad for you if you source it properly you know diet is the main contributor to fat loss not exercise like you had th these facts that are coming out and i think that that's what's so amazing about keto is i don't like it either when it's about picking a side or putting people kind of on one end or the other but 
to me, the reason I like keto is because it's just based on science, like hard, scientifically backed fact. And it's a very exciting field to be in because there is so much research coming out that is supportive of it. And if you are scientifically minded or you're someone who likes to see the, you know, the evidence, like that's what a keto diet encompasses. Is a, and there's lots of different ways of doing keto. I know for myself, like I do a, a whole foods ketogenic diet and it's not all about eating fat. It's just about making sure that you're getting the body, the essential nutrients that it needs instead of all these non-essential things that are damaging it. Yeah, yeah. So I definitely do support the ketogenic diet and I just don't like to put labels on it. And I mean, I think I, I kind of do keto diet. I never chase, you know, ketone measurements or anything like that. But mm -hmm. in all my explanation, I'm not saying that I don't think that's the best way to go. I 100% think that's basically the best way to go. I just don't want to put a label on it and make, you know, put it in a box. But yeah, the, the film is going to go over all the different evidence from evolutionary to randomized controlled trials to clinical mm -hmm. observations to biochemistry. It's going to look at all of those things and then figure out what the best way to eat is. And spoiler alert, it basically is something around the ketogenic diet, right? It's like a sapien diet. That's what I'm calling this like sapien framework, sapien lifestyle. It just means what humans are supposed to eat. And it's somewhere between, you know, paleo, keto, low carb, high fat, you know, something around there that, like you said, is just based on whole foods and not chugging fat, butter chuggers. I've heard people call like some of the keto <laughs> crowd, but that's kind of what I do. That's why I say I don't count macros. I don't do anything. I just eat nutrient dense foods that I know are healthy and that don't have carbs. And it kind of ends up being <laughs> a ketogenic diet, really. Right. And there's different ways of going about it. And I think at the beginning, you specifically mentioned that you yourself like, never really had any like weight issues or major health issues. But a lot of people who come to keto, they're coming from it at a framework where they are so overloaded by all the modern convenience foods that we have that they need this roadmap to say, well, you know, this is how you need to structure it. And you can take this roadmap and apply it to any restaurant, any grocery store, any place you are. And if you just overlay it on top of all the choices and available options, it's going to tell you pick this, this and this you know, so that it provides a roadmap for people and testing and all these things are like other layers and other tools that you can use and add to the lifestyle. But at the end of the day, I think we both agree it's just eating whole foods and it's doing things in order to optimize your health. And I think it's so cool that as a filmmaker, you know, you don't want to come out with like, here's another movie about low carb or keto. It's here's a movie about health and about science. And we're going to look at all the facts and we're going to look at all the studies and research and then, you know, draw conclusions. And that's, you know, I could see why that would be your approach as the filmmaker, just wanting to be inclusive. And I think it's also important to do what you're doing, which is look at the other side of things, you know, because it helps our views stay balanced. Like things don't always have to be one extreme or the other and things are not always black and white either like there's a middle ground too yeah and i mean even just to be taken seriously like if you just come out with what the health people know it's a propaganda film they know where you're at and i don't think i'm doing the public service by just going hardcore down one route like you said so yes i'm just trying right. to you know even just to be credible as a filmmaker yes so who are some of the main guests that you have and experts featured in the film? Well, so I'm getting my new people I'm getting in August are Nina Teichels, Dom D'Agostino, Professor Tim Noakes, Mark Sisson, and I'm working on a last person, so I won't say, to talk about sustainability and farming. So th those are the people mm. with, you know, have Jeff Volick, just awesome researcher. I think that's huge to get him in the film it's so hard to get it even yes. you know i got 30 minutes with him it was a miracle he came off stage from the low carb usa conference and was mobbed like a you know like a rock star for 45 minutes it took me to get him from the stage to the interview site his people were trying to just talk to him get a signature it's awesome that these people in wow. the low carb world respect him that much you know and it's that important to them to yes. get him to sign their book or just to tell him their story real quick so 
yeah, so I just think that's going to be big. And also it shows that it's just for the film, it's based on science. I'm talking to the real researchers. Well, that I think it says a lot about your approach is you're just like we were saying, you're going after the facts as opposed to coming out with a thesis and then finding people to back it up. You're more just investigating overall all these different perspectives and... And that's going to be really valuable for people. What are some of the, maybe was there like a myth or two that was really major that was kind of busted for you? That's something that I know you mentioned that one interview that you had, but some kind of like major shift that happened for you while making it or. Yeah, it's kind of a constant evolution where I never feel like I can be done sort of writing this or forming in my head of what the story is because each week I read a different book or I talk to someone else and I learn new information and I want to include it in the film. But I think most of the story is just that there's no one way to do things. And even though it works for you, you have to be open-minded. And, you know, Rob Wolf kind of talks about that a bit, personalized nutrition, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, gut health, like just some of those things where just different things work for different people, even working as a health coach, you know, I'm just starting working with a doctor friend of mine and, you know, seeing this in a clinical setting. And then you realize that there's so many different situations you have to deal with and people have so many different problems and that you can't just do a one size fits all solution. I find that really interesting because on the one hand, I know we have this bio individuality and we're all so different. And some people are extremely insulin sensitive. Some are really insulin resistant. Some people are extremely healthy and active and others like are really sanitary and older or younger. You know, we all have this individuality. And then you have this other layer, which is just like, well, you can't argue with that removing sugar from your diet, removing vegetable oils from your diet, removing processed like Franken foods and food products from your diet and eating just real food is going to benefit everyone. So there's like these different layers, you know, where there's kind of maybe a model or a starting place that you can base your own individual diet around. And then, you know, for the average person who just wants to be healthy, optimize their health, you know, and they're doing like, cold water immersion plunges and things because they're into biohacking and this kind of thing. And then there's someone, you know, there's a whole other category when you're talking about people who have like acute health conditions, inflammation, autoimmune, you know, there's like these different layers to it. But in general, there are some principles that are repeated and that do show they make a huge difference kind of for everyone as well. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, you could go to the extremes, but really it could be really simple blanket statements that everyone should just not eat mm -hmm. refined carbs, grains, sugar, vegetable oils. So I think it's, yeah, it's about you peel away the layers and then how detailed do you mm -hmm. want to get? Yeah, there's, you know, there's crazy guys like Ben Greenfield or I know some of these like biohacking people that get way down into the weeds. And I think that's great. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, start simply. Yeah. And yeah, and back to what we were talking about before, I don't think, I don't want to cast a negative light on people who measure ketones and do that kind of thing. I mean, yes. I'm lucky that it's working for me without having to do that. And I came in healthy, but yeah, definitely mm -hmm. just do what works for you and set a framework and set some, you know, hard numbers and goals around yourself. And that helps. That's absolutely awesome. So what's the process been like for you? Has it been, you know, it sounds like it's really aligned with kind of your passion around health and also filmmaking. So, you know, has it really been like kind of a flow experience for you to get to do these interviews? And like, what's your favorite part of working on the film? Making a documentary is an interesting <laughs> endeavor. And I think it, it's usually really hard. But with this, like you said, the flow or just it's been almost easy because I think of the community. Because that would be my point is that everyone here is so helpful and enthusiastic about getting the word out. And it's just such a great community in the topic itself where you, you're not selling anything. You're not, it's the opposite of, you know, selling some bogus product where you're, you're just constantly trying to sell and no one cares about you. No one wants to back you. It's the exact opposite where everyone's opening doors for you. And that's what I love. I mean, I've done, you know, tech, I've done different stuff in the past. And it's always you're fighting an uphill battle. You know, in tech, you're trying to get like users, you're like begging users to, you know, come use your product. I'm really happy I found this life's path where it's the opposite of that. You know, people are just finding such good success with this and everyone's been really helpful. And 
the community is just great. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's awesome. It is. It really and is. So yes, it's been really easy to get these interviews and you know get access to these people that are really busy and have done and that I really respect. You know, when I posted a picture with Jeff Volick, I said my heroes used to be you know like the athletes or the musicians, and now they're my heroes are you know researchers and people you know, changing the world, doing things like this. And so I think it's really cool that I got to talk to these people, you know, all these people I really respect. There are some incredibly inspiring health heroes in our space. And I know you get to feature a lot of them in the movie. And I really think that what you're doing is fantastic. When I heard your interview with Jimmy, and I saw the clip, you know, with Dr. Baker, I just really right away, like I wanted to do any part that I could in helping you get the word out. So I know you're doing a crowdfunding campaign. Can you tell us a little bit more about it and like what, how people can contribute and, you know, maybe play a role in history in terms of this movie, you know, moving the needle potentially on, you know, food guide reform. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the bigger goal. The movie is just a, a part of it. So Indiegogo, you can find me there, Food Lies and... It's, I don't know when this is going to air, but it's ending very soon. There's about eight days left. And, you know, we're doing pretty well so far. I had a high goal and I didn't have a huge platform starting this, you know. No one knew who I was <laughs> a couple months ago at all. <laughs> Not that anyone does now. <laughs> but at least, you know, I've gotten some good support from the community. And so I think we're going to go on Kickstarter and do a follow up campaign. So if anyone just wants to go to Indiegogo and see if we're still live there, just go to social media. You know, I'm trying to just post content and keep everyone in touch with what I'm doing. So you just search for Food Lies. I mean, it's food.lies on Instagram and Food Lies Org on Twitter. Right. And people can help be a part of helping you create and finish. Well, it sounds like you've mostly created the movie, but basically help you produce it and put it out there so that, you know, it gets a lot of views and awareness and just contributes to, you know, the health dialogue. Yeah, that's, that's really what I'm trying to do. That's, you know, like Nina Teichel's and the Nutrition Coalition and all these people are have that bigger goal of changing the guidelines. And actually in Low Carb USA, there was a something called a standard of care meeting. Yes. Yeah. You know, so yeah. yeah, we had a mm-hmm. whole bunch of doctors and they all stood up and talked about it and how they're trying to implement it and the barriers they're facing with just changing just the standards of care in medicine. You know, the, the guidelines for America is going to be a bigger, longer fight, but they think that they can change the consensus of their peers is all you really need. You don't need to rewrite the textbooks for the standard of care. So I, I'm going to try to work with Adele Height and Gary Tobbs on that, whatever I can do. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that I was the most excited to hear about is just having that discussion on standard of care because it is MDs that really have so much power when it comes to, you know, diagnosis and treatment options. And just saying, you know, if you just even have a little bit of information, if this condition can in any way be enhanced in terms of being combined with other therapies and methods, like maybe it's something to look into. And as soon as, you know, low carb or keto or anything crosses their lips, suddenly it becomes legitimized as opposed to being this like grassroots thing that's like, you know, does it have science Mm -hmm. behind it or doesn't? Or, you know, is it a fad or whatever? Like people use the word fad diet or things to discredit it. And, you know, it just goes against so much of what we've been told is what to do that having your MD who you trust or your trusted care practitioner, just being able to have some knowledge and information about it and be aware of it, it's going to have a huge impact just in terms of legitimizing this as something that can go along with other traditionally proven effective ways of treatment. Yeah, the doctors are going to be huge. And, you know, there's a few of these doctors that are really passionate about it and are doing great things to change that Mm -hmm. (laughs) mindset of their peers. So I think that's going to be great. Yeah, Tim Noakes, I think probably one of the most inspiring people I've ever seen. And that was my favorite part of the movie that you mentioned, the Pete Evans movie. 
you know, just showing his story because like I talk about a lot of this stuff with my husband and he saw, he got to see, well, look at what this guy's doing. Like he's been on trial and he's been using this as a way to get this information out there. And I mean, you mentioned modern day health heroes. Like I can't think of anyone who's like more the definition of that and what it takes to undergo that kind of professional scrutiny, especially if you're a doctor and someone uses like the quack word, like you said, I mean how can you run a business, provide for your family, do all these things if someone puts that label on you or someone discredits you just because you're trying to help people, you know? So that's really (laughs) the definition of a hero to me. You know, he's going to be in Ohio. He's flying over the sea and I cannot wait to meet him and talk to him. So. Wow. That's so exciting. So that'll be in the movie as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of went over the trial. So I don't, know if I'm going to repeat that, but definitely sitting down and talking with him one-on-one and getting his story. And oh, wow. I don't know if I should talk about this. We're, the plan is we're doing a, something called the Meeting of the Minds, where the people I mentioned at this conference, which would be Noakes, Dom D'Agostino, Nina Teichels, and Gary Tobbs is there too. I'm going to try to pull up Jeff Volek up in the room too, but we're going to get all those people and sit them down at a table And we have an hour scheduled to talk and film. And I don't think it's ever been done before in a movie. You know, usually you have these talking heads just talking away, telling you information. And instead, I'm going to have these great heroes of mine and just people on the cutting edge of all this and talking together, right? And they're going to be discussing these topics. And I think it's such a more engaging way to get out this information and just be different than a, a regular documentary. So actually, if anyone listening has any questions that you think I should ask in that session, it's so important. I mean, I might only have time to ask five questions and let them talk. And those questions are so important. So I'd love to get people's mm. opinions on w- what to ask those people. So yeah, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram, Facebook even. Let me know. Yeah, that's a great question to put out there. And, you know, I'm sure just having all that energy in one room, if you can contain it, <laughs> will be enough to have like quite an exchange. And that's a, a really cool and unique thing to do in a movie. So yeah, if people can go check out your campaign and help you do the final funding of it and be a part potentially of history in the making and just backing something that we know is going to have a huge impact on so many lives. So thank you for, you know, doing the work, putting in all your time and energy energy into making this film. And uh, you're definitely doing important work. You can see by how you're saying all those doors opening and things you're on a righteous, you know, mission. And it's awesome to see all the support that you're getting for it. So thanks for doing that and, and sure. making this film. Yeah. And thank you for supporting it and having me on and, and everyone listening. You know, everyone's been so great. And I love this. <laughs> I love it all. This is just all I want to do. I just wake up and want to just keep this going and figure out how to, you know, make the film better, get the word out there. What's next? You know, second film, you know, what else can we do? I started something yeah. called the Sapien Movement and <laughs> you go to sapienmovement.com and I don't even know what it's going to be, right? It's just I'm gathering people together and like, yeah. let's figure this out. You know, let's figure out how we can farm better and eat better. That's what it's about, but I don't know specifically what it's going to manifest into. Well, just staying open, like you said, is the most powerful thing sometimes. Yep. All right. Well, yeah. Thank <laughs> you so much for having me on. 